You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This episode is about how you can help end poverty. It's about what you can do to help alleviate poverty in the world in your lifetime now. This isn't a political podcast, and I'm not going to talk about any political means of doing anything. It's more of an economic perspective on what you can do, but it's also an individual one. It's about what you can do as an individual. And this is also only about what you can do as an individual in a principled way. And by that, I mean without involving any coercion or theft or anything like that. This is just about what you can actually do to help alleviate poverty. There's all sorts of things that you, we could get into discussing about um, ending poverty. We could talk about whether or not we mean absolute poverty or relative poverty. We could talk about whether we're talking about poverty close to home, near you in your own town, or poverty in Africa or in some other developing country. And it doesn't really matter because the, the ways in which you can actually have an impact um, that we're going to talk about in this podcast apply to all of those circumstances, regardless of what measure it is you choose for poverty. So what is it that you and I can do as individuals? Well, I want to start off with stating the obvious, really, but it's something that I think is ignored um, in the discussion about poverty. And that is that alleviating poverty is the same thing as generating wealth. You can't actually do anything to alleviate poverty unless you generate wealth in the first place. The two are actually the same thing. And generating wealth is the same thing as economic development. Now, when people talk about economic development, they often talk about it as if it's just something that happens automatically. Sort of, you know, somehow science continues to go onwards and development just sort of takes place. And I think that is a real mistake and a huge way of avoiding the responsibility and the fact that development doesn't just happen. Someone has to do it. Individual people have to actually make economic development happen and generate wealth to alleviate poverty. That's why I think it's really important to talk about what you can do. So I think it's important if you want to alleviate poverty... Do it for yourself first. You're the first person who you can actually pull out of poverty. And you're also, by doing that, able to show that you know what you're talking about if you want to help anyone else. So we're talking about economic development and we're talking about specifically what you can do yourself. Supposing that you do want to help alleviate poverty by doing your bit for economic development, what can you actually do? A lot of the people who talk about ending poverty are really interested in proposing taxes and charity to basically take money either coercively through tax or voluntarily through charity and move it from people who have more money to people who have less money and that's what they see as the alleviation of poverty but I would like to make the rather obvious point that moving money around is not the same thing as generating new wealth in fact you could say that when you take money either coercively through tax or voluntarily through charity and you move it from one person or one place to another person or another place, all you're doing is actually redistributing poverty back in the other direction. You're not actually getting rid of poverty, you're just spreading it out, maybe a bit thinner, but you're still just spreading it out. And that means that over time, you're not actually really reducing the overall level of poverty in the world. The only way to reduce the level of poverty is to generate new wealth. And that is what economic development is all about. So let's talk about the three ways in which you can help alleviate poverty. This comes from an article by an economist called Ludwig von Mises, uh, called The Anti-Capitalistic Mentality. And it's a great article. I'll put it a link in the um, show notes. But he talks about how economic development happens. And he defines what he calls the three progressive classes. And he's really talking about three things that you can do or that people do within society that actually leads to economic development and to the generation of new wealth. 
And those three things are innovation, entrepreneurship, and saving. So I'll run through them one by one. The first of those three is innovation. If you create a new technical innovation that has real value because it makes things faster or it enables something to happen that wasn't that previously wasn't possible, then what you do is you increase productivity. You allow everyone to achieve more in the same time. And what that does is make everything cheaper for everyone in the economy. So if you make a technical innovation, let's say that you create a software application or something, and the people using that application were able to do something in their lives that previously took them longer or that they had to do in a roundabout way that involved a lot more time or money, then what you've done is free up that time and money for them, which means that you've basically made other things cheaper for them. They now have more time to go and spend on doing other things or earning money to, to buy other things. And this is what the amazing thing about innovation is, is that actually if one person has an idea, a technical idea, everyone else can benefit from this innovation because everyone else can benefit from the time saving or whatever else it is that the innovation brings. And this is the beautiful thing about sharing ideas. Once somebody has, has worked out how to do something, everyone benefits. So this is something that you see, um, you know, even without people actually implementing their ideas and entrepreneurship, they're just, just giving stuff away for free in the open source software movement or on various web projects. Uh, innovation is an incredible benefit to the world. If you are able to do something innovative, you actually benefit the rest of, of uh, humanity by doing so. Now, of course, there are ways in which innovation gets stymied. And in particular, one of the worst ways is the way that governments use intellectual property law to actually stifle innovation. Even though these laws are supposedly to help uh, encourage innovation and protect innovation, what they actually do is they make it harder for everyone to benefit from the amazing uh, poverty reducing and wealth enhancing value that innovation brings to the economy and to everyone. And that's a big subject to go into in more detail. But if you're interested in understanding more about why that is the case, then I really recommend Stefan Kinsella's book Against Intellectual Property. It explains uh, what the problems with IP law are. So that's the first thing that you can do to end poverty is you can do something innovative that actually saves people time and money and enables them to have more time and more life to do other things. The second thing that you can do is entrepreneurship itself. And I've talked about that quite a lot in, in this um, podcast. But just to briefly restate, you know, it's entrepreneurship which actually brings new value to the world. All of the material benefits that we've got in the world are because people have actually brought them into being through entrepreneurship. Innovations are great, but you always need somebody to actually bring these innovations into the market and actually make them implemented. And that's what entrepreneurs do. They risk putting resources into new ventures to bring new value to people and to generate value that, that previously didn't exist. And when they do so, they create the division of labor, which gives rise to this amazing benefit called comparative advantage which is that everyone specializes in lots in doing lots of different things. And by trading with each other, they all gain a lot more value than they would have done if they tried to just make everything on their own. That's what entrepreneurship gives rise to this amazing sort of synergy effect of the division of labor in the marketplace. And that's where wealth gets generated. If it wasn't for entrepreneurship, there would be no jobs, there would be no uh, value created, there'd be no wealth. So if you become an entrepreneur, you will generate wealth, you will generate jobs, you'll generate value. And that provides value to all of your customers that they didn't have before. And you can see that because they're willing to pay for it. And it also contributes to the, the division of labor in the economy as a whole and the marketplace that gives rise to all of the wealth that we have generated. Now, this is totally the opposite to the way that a government bureaucracy works. And if you're interested in alleviating poverty, it's worth thinking about the fact that most development aid that goes supposedly towards alleviating poverty is managed by governments and is given from one government to another. 
And there's a lot of studies out there that show just how incredibly inefficient and corrupt that process is. And although it's actually entrepreneurship that generates wealth, it, governments always hinder entrepreneurship in, in far too many ways for me to go into here. But anyway, that's another thing that you can do. If you want to alleviate poverty, you can help make the economy a more efficient, richer, more diverse place by creating your own business and providing value that, to customers that they wouldn't have been able to get before. Now, the third thing that you can do may sound a little odd, but it's actually saving. And Mises t explains what it is about saving that gives rise to economic growth and development. Because saving is basically the same thing as capital accumulation in, in economist terms. When you save, what you do is generate a resource for economic development. Because there is no entrepreneurship without saving. There's no development or new capital without the savings to invest in them. And really, saving is just the old virtue of thrift. You know, it's living within your means and generating a surplus that can be used to invest in the future. And that might be your own business if you become an entrepreneur, or it might be a business of a friend that you uh, support, or some other business in the economy that you support indirectly through savings, which then through the economy and the financial system go on and get loans to another business. Or it might even be someone in, the, in a developing country somewhere who you lend to uh, through a micro lending site like Kiva.org. But if you save, you are actually a part of the process of creating resources to the future. And look at how different that is to what governments do. We're currently in a time when most Western governments are in a sovereign debt crisis where rather than creating resources for the future, what governments have done is to spend outside their means to such a point that future generations are going to be crippled by debts that were built up before they were even born. I think it's completely immoral. Another thing that's happening at the moment is that Western governments are engaging in what's called financial repression, which is where they keep interest rates artificially so low that it actually really discourages people from saving. It makes it very, very hard to save, and it makes it very, very hard to actually build up resources for the future in this way. So it's not easy, but nonetheless, that's something that actually is a very, very progressive thing economically to do. And of course, it's good for you. So that's an economic view of how you can help alleviate poverty. I hope that's interesting. Um, I'd love to hear any comments or feedback that you have. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.